Hello, in this video we are going to be looking at the responsive mode built into the Safari web browser. It's a fantastic feature within Safari. I primarily use Chrome as my browser, where it's the development browser or it's a browser in general. But sometimes I do use other browsers. I know that like tools that I don't use as my main tools for development purposes because certain ones have excellent features and this is one of those features don't get me wrong before I get into it you can get plugins for Mozilla Firefox and for Chrome and for the browser as well that do similar things but the fact that it's built in and it works really well I'm pretty sure Chrome has something like this built in but it's just how well it works in Safari is what drew my attention to it and I thought I think it's worth sharing with everyone else because if you don't know about it then I think it's a shame not to know about it just because of how easy it is to use and how useful it is and how cool. If you already know, fantastic, continue using it. So the responsive mode, well, what I've got is my Sonar Learning educational platform loaded up right here. And this is a responsive website. So if I start resizing, as you can see stuff is resizing. We've broken down to a smaller breakpoint, something a bit more mobile now, as you can see. But as you can see, within here, this breakpoint, there's still you know, quite a bit of range. And you don't know what device the, let's say, iPhone will look like. Your iPhone might display like that, it might display like that. You don't know. Whereas the responsive mode allows you to select different devices and see what it looks like without having you to you know, resize it yourself. Don't get me wrong, resizing the browser like this is still a very very powerful tool and I would still recommend doing that but there's a, there are certain instances where you just want to see exactly what it looks like and instead of deploying it or checking it on your phone every single time also you might have access to a certain device as well this little built-in responsive feature is fantastic so you go to the development menu in the top section right here click develop then you go to enter responsive design mode and when you click that it loads up this responsive page so it's just loaded up the iPhone SE version this is what it would look like on there and if I go to the iPhone 6s as you can see and it's very similar but there are well, differences certain things are bigger smaller text isn't all you know on this on two lines on the success the SE some three lines now on certain things this is a great way of seeing the difference on a success plus it's even different some more on an iPad mini in landscape mode it's slightly different again on the iPad Air 2 it's essentially the same and the iPad Pro it actually shows it like a desktop so this is a great way of seeing the difference between them because maybe you do this and you like even though iPad Pro is still is big you still want it to display it in more of a mobile tablet format and then you could do some maybe some JavaScript or some PHP code or something to basically force it if it's some sort of mobile device always have it mobile and then you can just do some general size tests as well so just some basic ones I got you know 1080 Seven six eight, and an, another great thing is if you if you have one selected and you click it again, it basically inverses it, so it allows you to change from landscape to portrait. Because by default, the iPads are in landscape, but you might want to see what it looks like in portrait mode. And also, it shows you in a in the snapped versions as well. So this is, I think, this is just absolutely fantastic that you can see all these different versions within seconds. Imagine even if you had all these devices, and even if they were all connected, because I, I know they this device you can get that basically ducks all your devices. This piece of software you can deploy your like your website or your app in one go with one click. But try you know use them. Or, and just having a look at the differences, it's just not the same. It's just not as fast. Don't get me wrong, that has its own merits, and I don't take anything away from that approach. And I would still recommend, you know, testing it on a physical device. There's nothing bad about that, and definitely you can't, I can't 
make it clear enough how important it is to test your analytical device, but the ease of use of testing it within the responsive design mode in Safari and how good and fast it is, it just makes it a no brainer. Thrive Pro, as you can see in more of a snapped mode, it is like mobile. In the other big snap mode, still like mobile. In you know 50 50 snap mode, still like mobile. And in landscape mode, it's more like mobile, but it's, it's like a smaller desktop, bigger mobile. Um, but on landscape, it is full desktop. So you can also click on here, change the browser as well. I think this is fantastic. You can go to other and type in a custom use raging string and you can change the browser. So that's a fantastic way of testing it on different browser types as well. Instead of having to you know, manually try and do it or using a platform online that allows you to to deploy to different ones which take a lot longer and a lot of them are paid as well so that's just been a very very quick overview of the responsive design mode in safari actually just one more thing to exit this mode all you do is go back to develop exit responsive design mode or just use the shortcut right here to enter into it and exit out and we've now exited and we just have the normal website well, that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on our educational platform, stonearlearning.co.uk. There'll be a link in the description. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment. And as usual, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.